you want to a life transforming experience, as Pastor Prince Abba brings you God's word with deep insights and power. God bless you. Good morning. Just come to your neighbor left and right and just greet him, shake his hands and bless him. Tell him we're welcome to church. Just thank him and, uh, you know. Okay, so you may be seated in God's presence. Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. Before we get into that scripture, I want you to, just while you're sitting down, lift up your hands and pray this prayer. Father, bestow wisdom upon me. Just pray that prayer. There's a reason why you have to pray. Bestow your wisdom upon me. man who has divine wisdom will learn faster we grow faster we become a better leader than a man who has no wisdom you can take forever and be training and teaching a man who lacks wisdom forever he will never grow that's why the scripture says they are ever learning but never being able to come to the knowledge of the truth Ask the Lord for wisdom. Ask the Lord for wisdom. Grant me wisdom. It's amazing to know that this was what Solomon asked God for. Of every sacrifice he made, God asked him, open check, make your request. The only thing he asked him was wisdom. People who don't pray for wisdom don't value it. And if you don't value it, you will be a mess. You will be a mess, a total mess. Ask the Lord for wisdom. Father, give me wisdom. As a young man, give me wisdom. As a young lady, give me wisdom. That I might know how to live. That I might know how to behave. That I might know how to... The Bible said, and David behaved himself wisely. That I might know how to behave. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. You know the scripture says, He that lacks wisdom, let him ask of the Lord that giveth libra. Sparing not. Because the value for wisdom cannot be overemphasized. That's why God says, if you lack it, ask for it. And how do you know that you have wisdom? They are actually signs of a man that has wisdom. That's not what I'm here to talk to you about. But I'm going to give you that divine instruction. If you want to be a great man and a great woman, you need the wisdom of God in your life. More than having a full account, you need your life to be full of wisdom. Wisdom is not knowledge. Knowledge is the acquisition of information. Wisdom goes beyond knowledge. Wisdom now is the right application of knowledge. Wisdom is not knowing something. Wisdom is applying something. So, you can have knowledge and not know how to apply it. You can know something and not know how to use it. You can have a powerful relationship and not know how to profit from it. And not know how to service it. I 
and man's greatest problem is wisdom problem. It's not financial problem. It's not relationship problem. The greatest root behind the problem of man is wisdom problem. Because once wisdom is lacking, every other thing will suffer. That's why Solomon in his wisdom said that wisdom is the principal thing. And I said, in all that I get, get it and get understanding. So if it's a principal thing, it means that wisdom is central to everything we do. Marriage thrives on it. Ministries thrives on it. Relationships thrive on it. Everything we do thrives on wisdom. Once wisdom is lacking, you are a fool. And the word fool there is not an insult. Fool doesn't mean that somebody insulted you. Fool is the state of your life. Fool is the state of your being. If you don't have wisdom, what you have is foolishness. So for instance, if somebody says you are a fool, that person is not insulting you. The behavior that exudes from your life, the way you do things, is what shows that this person is foolish. Foolishness is not an insult. Foolishness is an attribute. But now, what that thing does is that if you have it in your life, it produces undesirable outcomes and results. Have you seen people who don't know how to talk? People who you will never find wisdom in their mouths. Wisdom here does not mean somebody who has knowledge in his mouth. That's what we're talking Somebody who does not know how to say certain things. It's not about the power of communication now. He doesn't know how to say certain things. You know? He doesn't understand how to communicate or relate certain things. Now, as I teach you, part of the things you will see, hmm, you you will see, you know, this service will tie to the favor is broken. I'm sorry, protocols are broken in my favor. Is that correct? Yeah. So sometimes, when you hear some words that sound this way, you feel that it's a magic that will happen some way. And then something will just happen. And then you see a miracle in your life. No, sir. If you want to see any result, find the principles that governs the operation of what you want. Then apply those principles and you get the result. Results don't respond to miracles. If result does respond to miracles, I can tell you and beat my chest, I'll tell you that results respond to miracles only within 2%. For instance, if you're sick now and I pray, you'll get healed. That's a miracle. But, after getting healed, I will not keep praying for you to stay in health. What will not keep you in health is principles. If you want to use this door now, there are principles that governs the operation of this door. I want to go outside there now. And in, in my going out, I start doing this door. Like, Hello? What I'll end up doing is damaging this door. That is if I finally damage it. Or what I'll end up doing is not being able to exit this door. Why? I'm not following the principle. There's a principle that governs the opening of this door. That principle is that you have to hold the handle and pull it down. It opens with ease. Have you got what I'm saying now? Yeah, I try to open it. I can't open it. If I now come and start saying, hey, I don't want to open it this way because I don't feel like it. What I feel like doing is doing this. Your feeling doesn't matter. 
I don't think I want to. I, I, this is the way this door must open. I don't feel like opening it like this. You will stay here and your feeling will keep you here. You have to ignore your feeling and subscribe to principles. So, what principles do, does is that it brings your feelings and your assumption and all that to a place of if you want to live life by feelings and by assumption, you won't get results. It's like if I enter a car now and I want to drive out of my gate and I need to reverse and I say, no, 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 I don't feel like using the arrow sign. I need to move. Let me do it on drive. I need to show people that I can reverse without even doing arrow. It must be drive. Once I put drive, what will the car do? To go forward. Let's assume there's a wall there. That car will go forward and crash the wall. So I'm saying I feel like using drive to go back. You will be there and feel and keep feeling and keep feeling and nothing will happen. If anything happens, it will be opposite of what you want. What you want is to go back, but you're trying to use drive. The drive will give you what is programmed to give. There are principles that governs everything. You see principles like time and principles like Let's even take some natural principles of life. Gravity. From the creation of the world till now, that principle has been constant. Your feeling can change it. No matter how you wish that when you throw this mic, it will suspend in the air. No matter how you feel like it, once it goes up, it will come down. It's a principle. So, the most powerful people in the world are people who subscribe to principles. That's why I told you to pray that prayer. People who subscribe to principles, they don't live their life based on emotions. Their life doesn't run based on sentiment. Their life doesn't run based on feelings. Their life runs based on principles. When you begin to do things because you feel a certain way, then just know that you have resigned from success. You have resigned. That is, you long wrote your resignation letter and say, I'm not part of the equation of success. I don't want to even be successful, so let it just go. You resigned a long time. The principle for me is that no matter how stressful the meeting of yesterday is, I must be in the service. It doesn't matter how I feel. Hmm. You want to raise the most powerful people, the most powerful church, the most powerful businesses, the most powerful anything built on principles. Stop building on feelings. You even want to build the most powerful marriage, build on principles. Stop building on feelings. Feelings are very dicey. They are very fluctuational. That's why now you're feeling cold here. Because of the condition of the room, the AC and the fan. You can leave this place now and go out and start feeling hot. But no matter the condition of this room, gravity is still the same here. Gravity is what it is here, and it is the same thing outside. So the feeling in this place, the cold in this place, doesn't mean that if this mic goes up, it won't come down. If I take it to a hot temperature outside, and I take the mic up, it will come down. It is because principle, I don't know how God created principle. We well, created it in such a way that it's so powerful, it, it, it overrides anything. So feelings are, are very fluctuational. Here I can be feeling cold now, and I go outside and I'll start feeling hot. It doesn't happen to gravity. Principle, constant, constant. 
It doesn't happen to the law of motion, Isaac Newton. Everything is in a state of rest. If I come and touch this thing, it moves. Motion. An external force has impacted on it. Motion. This place is cold. I go outside, it's hot there. I go and touch something, motion will apply. Doesn't matter the state of the weather. So, if we learn now how to subscribe to principles, that's why you see religion is a thief. Religion is the enemy of God and the enemy of the kingdom. When people function based on religion, they put principles aside and then think that by having a certain form that they are pleasing God. Are we together? It's, you don't need to say things that, you know. Are we here? Are we together? The real indices for success is what I'm teaching you now. Leverage principles. Leverage wisdom. Okay. Uh, what is chapter 15? <laughs> yeah. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Now, when I start showing you everything I'm going to show you, you will really see that 90% of the principles I'll show you there are tied to wisdom. Are we there already? Matthew chapter 15. Verse 22, I know your stuff is so inside this time around. I wish it was here, but no problems. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him and saying, Okay, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. The next verse. But he answered her, not a word. The issue is, what do you do in this kind of situation? For some, is to get angry. But you want protocols to be broken for you. You are praying. God, break protocols for me. Give me favor, Lord. Grant me favor. <laughs> the thing just came. You know you pray some people sometimes. They want to show you and all that. The demon say, wait, I was taking my bath. I'm ready now. <laughs> I was doing makeup. I just finished up back. Hey, Amen. It's wisdom to laugh when they crack small joke. Even if you don't feel like laughing, just see, you know, just say, ha, 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 ha. It's wisdom. Hey, Amen, somebody. Hmm. But he answered her not a word. So even this Jesus sometimes doesn't respond to people. Have you seen people who call maybe a line and the person didn't dig and they're angry? I've seen people like that. They call me with me and they didn't dig maybe because I didn't have the time or my phone wasn't there. They're angry. So I'm even leave the church. So even Jesus doesn't pick call sometimes. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came to make matters even worse. The disciples now came and urged Jesus, saying, Send this woman away. For she cries out after us. So she's not just crying to Jesus, he even coming to the disciples and saying, Please, the able should beg the man, beg or can let him heal my daughter. Can you just come and beg him, please? And then they become weary, they are weary, they are wondering, what is all this? And then after a while, the woman still goes to Jesus to go and plead. And then they get angry now. And they come to Jesus and say, Okay, send this woman away. Let her just vacate here. She's creating confusion and causing nuisance here. Watch this. <laughs> the next verse. But he answered and said, 
I was not sent except to the lordship of the house of Israel. This is Jesus now trying to pacify the woman by even saying something. But beyond saying something, he even assaults the injury. It was better he didn't even say a word. He should have just kept quiet. At least you don't know what is in the heart of the man. But now you open your mouth. That's he didn't want to say. So the woman doesn't get offended. You finally say it. He said, I wasn't sent to you guys. You're not part of this family. I was actually sent to the house of, the lost house of the sheep of Israel. The lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's where they sent me to. So it's not you guys. <laughs> See the next thing. Then she came and worshipped him. Say, Lord, help me. She came and worshipped him and said, Lord, help me. The day you know how to relate with authority, your life will go far. The day you know how to relate with Jesus, relate with God, relate with men, God plays over you. The day you get the wisdom on how to relate with certain people, you will see how protocols can break for your sake. Then Jesus, yeah, I'm not done with that one. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, Help me. Because you can't assess help without certain characteristics. You can't assess help without certain attributes in your life. There are some things you are doing that is repelling help from you. There are attitudes you exhibit sometimes. Sometimes you don't know. You are innocently ignorant, but you are doing these things, and if repelling help, God wants to take you to the next level. But there are certain things you need to observe. The next verse. But he answered and said, this is to make matters worse again. This woman has worshipped him. Look at somebody bowing down and worshipping him. And Lord, you know, I, I love you. I refer you. Please help me. And the woman, the man goes again. But he answered and said, this time he has added not only salt to the injury, he has added pepper to the salt and the injury. He said, I... It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. So, you didn't only say that you didn't come for these people. You came for the, for the sheep of Israel. You went further to say that it's not good for me to take the bread, which is a healing. It's not good for me to take the bread and give it to little dogs. So, this man now tells this woman, you are a dog. A puppy, that's what he even says. Not even a mature one that eats. That, uh, you know, they are mature dogs. When you see them, you have reference with them. Somebody hear what I'm saying? See, you are a puppy. You have not even finished growing. So we don't even give bread to people like you. Watch out of that. The next verse. And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet, even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. The woman did not react. The woman did not say, you call me a dog, I've taken a knock. The first time you tell you didn't come for us. Now you're calling me a dog. Not just that you called me a dog, you even called me a little dog. Ah, I can't take it. Carry, uh, Abigail, let's go home. If we don't hear you, let's go and look for Papa Lao to hear you somewhere there. This man, that's how you are arrogant. You claim you are a pastor. You claim you are a leader. You claim you are Jesus. See how you are insulting people everywhere. What kind of leader are you? Let me tell you something. There's something about leadership. Leadership is the mirror of your character. Authority is what mirrors who you are. Authority is what mirrors your nature. And let me even tell you something. My God, help me this morning. Because there's a lot, but I want to calm down. When God wants to iron your flaws, He brings you to a man like me. I, I don't want to describe anything for that. I don't want to start telling you, see the kind of person God. I'm telling you specifically. If God wants to show you who you really are and how you really are, the kind of people He brings you to are people like me. Because there are things we do in your life that most people don't have the courage to do. 
if I'm not yet doing it in your life, it's simply because I have not yet adopted you as a son. But when you see me start doing some things in your life, just go and do thanksgiving. Say, this man has finally accepted me as a son. For instance, if I ignore the things you do, it doesn't mean I'm afraid of you. Ignoring the things you do that are wrong simply means I'm here to accept you. It simply means that I am not sure you've even accepted me as a father. Because the two waiting. If I know this guy is not calling me father for mouth or daddy for mouth, this person sees father. He knows this is my father. It's something he knows. Uh, I will hold back on it. If I need to store your mic, I will store your mic from where I am. That's me. You do something wrong, I will fire you from there. That is acceptance speaking. You do something wrong and I just turn off my phone and keep quiet. That is rejection speaking. Rejection here is not throwing you away. Rejection simply means that you've not given me opportunity to father you. Because this kind of woman knows something. There's something she knows that made her qualified for breakthrough. There are people who have what it takes to help you, for instance. But your attitude is your problem. There are people who have certain numbers on their phone. <laughs> certain contact. They have certain platforms. They have certain places you could move there and become. But your attitude, your behavior, your lifestyle, the way you portray yourself and do things can make people skeptical about you. How you treat precious relationships that enter your life can end up determining whether the next door opens for you. There's something about authority. This woman understands the concept of authority and the concept of power. She knows it. You see people who fight authority, for instance, who speak against authority, who fight men in authority, there are people who lack wisdom in this area. They lack wisdom. People who abuse access. The greatest form of foolishness is abuse of access. The Bible says that a wise man sees danger and he hides himself. What that means is that there are certain things because you are under authority and you are around authority, there are certain things you should not do. Doing them will portray you in a certain light. And once people who are above you start seeing you in a certain light, their doors they can't open for you. Because every door you want to pass through, the key is in somebody's hand. You didn't hear what I said. All keys are not in your hand though. Understand it? All keys are not in your hand. There are doors you want to assess. You are knocking on that door. The door is not opening. Find who has the key to it. And when you meet that person, what releases the key is not your height. It's not that you're fine. It's not that you wear. It is this thing, this attitude. Ah, yesterday, when I got back home, you see me crying. I was crying. Somebody was talking to me. You know, I was having dinner. And the guy was telling me, you don't know what you've done. He said, you have made a statement. This year has been made in a... Even another man who came out, he said, this day has not been done in the whole of South East, or Enugu, or whatever. He said, well, I'm not feeling it. I'm not even feeling anything. I don't... You know why? I found out why finally. Because what is, I was accessing attitudes. And what was giving me concern was, how can people be ungrateful? How can people be very, very stupid? And this is the man who wants to now become great. I, now I know why some people are poor, are where they are. God can't even help them. Even Jesus said, the poor you always have with you. I felt this in spite of all the results, the success of the meeting, for me in my heart. Do you know there are people, even if you kill yourself for them, they are not satisfied. Such people can't get anything. 
Queen Maki Zoe. And if you're here, hear me now. I came here to help you people this morning. No? You want to see things broken, protocols broken. There's a kind of man you must be. This kind of woman you must be. All this culture, some of you inherited maybe from your family or from your company, it will trap you. There are sometimes even what is standing before you is the miracle you've been praying for, but you can't see it. You, I can't see it. I wonder what kept on this is some people. For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.